So after the most recent episode of Masters of the Air, which was episode 6, we got a real deep insight into the minds of the three main characters that were left in the show, Bucky, Crosby and Rosenthal. There wasn't really any action in the air at all in episode 6, and to be honest, judging by the trailer that's been released for next week's episode, it doesn't look like there's going to be much more either. Maybe just seeing what occurred in the air from the perspective whilst on the ground. With the trailer being released just before the credits started rolling, I thought I'd break down the trailer and give my thoughts on what I think is going to be occurring in the next episode. So let's get into it. Here is Masters of the Air Episode 7 Trailer Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. So the trailer for the next episode opened up inside of Starlag Luft 3, the prisoner of war camp that we saw Bucky arriving at during the end of Episode 6. There was a shot of the prisoners being put to work and also being in a queue, lining up, most likely collecting water in the jug that many of them were holding onto. The first line of dialogue that was spoken was uttered by Bucky, as he said, What do you say if you and I, we made our move? This was being spoken to Buck whilst they were inside the hut where they'd sleep. Alongside this, there was a shot of Bucky and Buck looking on at something when they were outside. Most likely connected to the opening section of the trailer and also the next part where it looked like there was a fight or something like that breaking out. It seems like Bucky wants to try and find a way to make it out of the prisoner of war camp, but with Buck responding by saying, my plan is to get home to Marge in one piece. And then with Bucky quickly interrupting and saying, well, you'd die here in one piece, it shows the two opposing views and approaches that they both have in trying to survive the captured space that they found themselves in. Something which does tie back to the original behavior of the best friends. They've always been different, despite getting on so well. And that's even the case when it comes to this situation here. After the dialogue was spoken, there was a shot of Buck helping somebody who looked like he was either too physically weak to continue, or he'd been injured by somebody. Maybe a guard, or maybe he had a disagreement with another person that was being held prisoner. The fact that Buck was shouting towards them, it makes me think that it could well be somebody that's a prisoner. In the background as well, Bucky was also there. This was followed by a shot of the German guards releasing a dog onto what I imagine is the person that was opposite Buck. The dog pounced onto the person and then looked like they were going to maul him. So this is probably going to be a scene which will showcase the horrors that went on in the cameras for the people that the Germans viewed as the enemy. The final line that was spoken in this scene was by Bucky towards Buck. And he said, is that what you want to do? asking him if he'd rather die here in one piece rather than plan to make their move and look to find a way out. Something which feels bold to even attempt. Following this, there was then a collection of shots which showcased several of the men that were alongside Buck and Bucky making a makeshift radio out of things that were inside of the walls of the camp, with somebody also keeping watch and ensuring that no guards came near the entrance and saw what they were doing. The group was successful in doing this and they managed to get a signal, to the point where they heard a newscaster say, while allied troops remained pinned down on the beaches. The next time we saw the trailer, it showed that what they did may end up causing some issues for them, but we'll get to that. After this first part of the trailer, we were back in Thorpe Abbott's and we saw that Rosenthal was welcoming new recruits to the 100th bomb group. As he walked off, Jack said, Rosie is the best pilot I've ever seen fly a B-17. You pray to God you can fly half as good as him. You might make it to 25 too. This was accompanied with shots of Rosenthal looking around the plane and taking it in, making sure everything was all right with it, almost becoming one with it, showing that he took a slightly different approach and he was now in that rhythm that he felt that he stopped in the last episode by going to the flat house. The fact that it was mentioned that he was on the cusp of getting to 25 missions and us also hearing how most people don't get anywhere near that number and when somebody did before, there was a party thrown, it shows just how good of a pilot Rosenthal was. It also showed us that a little bit of time had passed since the last episode, as the last time we saw him, he was leaving the flat house and he'd only done three missions. The next shot that we had was of a siren going off and there was a plane in the distance that was billowing with smoke, with people being brought out of it that looked like they had horrific injuries where they'd been severely burned. After seeing that, Crosby said, they don't care if they kill us all, do they? Something which was accompanied with a shot of members of the 100th bomb group being taken out of what I imagine would be where they'd get treated for their injuries. But this time, they were getting loaded into ambulances with a sheet over them, showing us that the death toll was rising at Thorpe Abbott's and it was impacting the mindset of many of them. This was then followed by a line which said, it'll be good for you to show the new guys that 25 can really get done. 
There was a shot of Rosenthal that was played over this piece of dialogue, so one would think that they'd be referring to him. However, the likes of Crosby did partake in a lot of combat missions too, so I wonder if they're going to be talking about him here as well. Showing that at this point, morale could have just been so low, and all they wanted to do was lift it, and show that by going up in the air, you weren't just flying into the jaws of death. After this section of the trailer, we were back at Stalag Luft 3, and the German guards were going through one of the huts where the prisoners would sleep. During their searches, they found something that was tucked into the table leg. It's hard to know what it is that they found, but it could be connected to the radio signal that the group managed to pick up and the way that they were able to do it. I had to up the brightness and lower the contrast to be able to see what it was exactly, but it did look like some of the forging and manipulation of materials was inside of the leg. I think this is something that we're just going to have to wait and see in the next episode. However, with the officers finding it, it seems like it's going to cause disruption amongst the camp, and maybe even death for some. We're obviously in the camp in October 1943, and at the same time, there was something which was considered the first escape, where three men, Codner, Williams, and Philpot, managed to successfully get out after planning their escape for three months. So I wonder if that's something that we're going to be seeing whilst there. The Great Escape is something that occurred in March 1944, but was a plan that was being worked on from March 1943, where three complex tunnels were dug where 76 people tried to escape. Out of the 76 prisoners that escaped, 73 of them were recaptured, and then once taken back, it was ordered that half of them were to be killed. It's something which is just utterly devastating, and with it occurring near this time period, it makes me wonder if we're going to be getting a glimpse of what happened with that in the show. With only three episodes to go until the season concludes, I am really intrigued to see what's going to happen and how it's going to end. It feels like what was once about being in the air constantly now has us across the continent of Europe, so it's developing in a really good way. We haven't heard from or seen Quinn in two episodes now, and he wasn't featured in this trailer for episode 6, so I do wonder what that means for him. Are we going to see more? Surely, right? As why would they start that arm of the story? Either way, bring on the next episode because I'm sure it's going to be a good one. This show just keeps getting better and better every week. So, there you have it. Masters of the Air Episode 7 Trailer Explained. If you want to see more videos on Masters of the Air, then click on the card in the top corner. I cover the show every Friday when the episodes get released, so be sure to come back to the channel following the episode. I've been watching Band of Brothers alongside Masters of the Air, and I've been thinking about covering that show too. I was thinking of doing episode by episode breakdowns. I know the show's old, but it's just so good and I'd love to talk about it. If you'd like to see videos on that show, then drop a comment down below and let me know. What do you think will happen in the next episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.